Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and hanging out with me for today's video. If you don't know me and if you're new to this channel, hi, welcome, my name is Agnes. I am a content creator from Australia. I make content on everything that is to inspire and motivate women in particular to live their best life. So whether that be cleaning, organizing, uh, anything to do with productivity or planning your day, routines, all that kind of fun stuff. So if that is something you're interested in, after this video, be sure to check out a few of the videos in my description box that I think you might be interested in and consider subscribing. All right, so let's just get straight into today's video and I wanted to share with you some of the... Some of the... I wanted to share with you some of the things that have been a negative experience since my time on YouTube. So getting straight into today's video, which is 10 things I hate about YouTube. And that is obviously uh, taken from the movie title, 10 things I hate about you, which is a great film starring a famous Australian actor. I thought I'd use that title as a bit of a segue into me talking about some of the less nice things about YouTube. And overall, I really like YouTube. It's a great experience and I've got a thousand things that I probably like about YouTube. Today, I just wanted to share a couple of things that are not so great about YouTube. So number one, and probably my worst experience that I've ever had on YouTube is dealing with copycats. Now I'm not talking about people who, you know, sometimes like, for example, in the cleaning and organizing community, there can be like a trending topic or trending title where uh, someone puts out a video and it does well. And then a lot of people will use that same title to create their content from. I'm not talking about that kind of copycatting. I'm talking about when someone takes your content, like your video, your ideas, your content, your script, even word for word, and puts that in their content and in their videos and obviously claims it as their own without giving any credit to the original source. Now, I've had that happen to me twice now, pretty seriously, well, what I consider seriously, uh, in that I know of twice in the last few months. So when I moved into this apartment back in November, I was really tired. It was a huge job and I thought I'm going to put on a cleaning motivation video to help me get motivated to get organized. So I just put on my Apple TV. I think I asked Siri, I was like, just play a cleaning motivation video. First one that popped up was something like 17 things about keeping your house clean and organized that you wish you learned before. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, cool. I've made a video about that kind of thing. Like I enjoyed making that kind of content. So let's watch it. So I put it on and <laughs> Like a couple of minutes into the video, there was one thing that this lady said that was very, very, very similar to what I had said in my 10 Habits for a Clean and Tidy Home video. And I was like, oh, that's a coincidence. It's a pretty big coincidence, but you know, nevertheless, it's just a coincidence. Anyway, the video went on and it was like, again, another tip that she suggested, it was literally word for word, the term that I used. And I know that this is my term because I've got those 10 tips printed out and saved and it's a printable and everything and you know I worked really hard on making that video and coming up with those 10 really kind of I'm not catchy but like terms that I put a lot of work into creating and that were you know in some ways different to everything else that's out there so then I just kept watching and I was like it happened just again and again and again and it wasn't just the tip that she was copying it was everything that I said after I suggested that tip as in the whole explanation of what I meant by that tip or like examples of how you can do that. And I was like, this is the dodgiest I have heard in a long time. And I was like, getting a little bit angry, I've got to say. I was like, what the heck? This lady has just obviously watched my video and just taken it down or you can download the script. You can actually download the transcript from YouTube videos now. 
and you could probably just copy it word for word and the ironic thing is that one of the things that she had in her tips was that um her being able to spend time working on her scripts and her content ideas for the youtube i was like lady you don't spend any time working on your own things by the look of it you just watch someone else's video and lift it like a hundred percent Habit number four is one of my favorites and that is to have quick and easy daily routines. Create a cleaning routine. Daily routines are a great way to keep on top of the cleaning and tidying in your home. The key to managing household duties quickly and efficiently is to design. Habit four is an oldie but a goodie and that is to clean as you go. Tip number one, clean as you go. So the next habit for a clean and tidy home is to ensure that you have a place for everything and everything is in its place. Tip number five, have a place for everything and have everything in its place. Habit six sounds easy, but it actually takes some time to become second nature. And that is don't put it down, put it away. Tip number three, don't put it down, put it away. It honestly takes 20 seconds or less to put something away in the right place the first time. It honestly takes 20 extra seconds or less to put something away in the right place the first time. Then to dump it on the first free surface you find. Then dump it on the first free surface you find. Then to move it when you need that space and then to have to move it again and again until you finally put it away. Then to move it when you need that space and then have to move it again and again until you finally put it away. So habit 10 and we've come to the end and that is always remember that done is better than perfect. Tip number 15, done is better than perfect. I mean, you don't need to sweep, vacuum and steam mop your floors every night when a quick spot clean will do the job. You don't have to steam mop your floor every night when a quick vacuum and spot clean will do the job. Making your bed every day is a great habit to get into. Trust me, I timed myself. It took 47 seconds to quickly make my bed this morning. To make the bed in the morning, time yourself to one minute to make your bed. Putting off cleaning and tidying your home because you think you don't have the time to do it all perfectly will leave you living in constant chaos. Putting off cleaning and tidying your home because you think you don't have time to do it perfectly leave you living in constant chaos. I always feel fun and energetic to create new content for you guys and I'm always creative, not stressing out to meet the deadline. So I think that in that one, it was like five times where it was really like, it wasn't just a coincidence. It was like word for word. And I kind of um denied about what I should do about it. And I was like, oh, don't make a big deal about it. It's not a big deal. Just let it slide. And then I was talking to my kids and I was talking to other people about it. And they were like, no, nah, you should probably do something about it. You don't want to just turn a blind eye to bad behavior. When nothing happens and there's no consequence, it just encourages and it allows the person that did it in the first place to get away scot-free and then to, you know, have no consequence. So they're more likely to continue that behavior and do it again and again. So I was like, okay, well, I looked through the copyright claims and things that avenue that you can do through YouTube, but it's pretty, um, got some pretty strict requirements on what is considered copyright and what's not. So this is probably more plagiarism. Copyrights, if they put like your logo or um, logos, songs, all that kind of stuff, that's more the copyright thing where this is more like plagiarism. So I kind of forgot about it with the YouTube avenue. So pretty much nothing eventuated through the uh, YouTube avenue and I kind of just was like, you know what, I'm just not gonna let that, you know, I'm gonna protect my peace. Um, if you will. I'm not going to just focus on that. I'm just going to get on with life and just forget it. Just chalk it up to a bad experience. And I tried to have that, you know, imitation is the highest form of flattery, which is something that someone left in the comments recently as well when I mentioned it in my last video. Anyway, a couple of months went by and I don't usually watch videos that are in the same kind of vein of my content that I produce and I don't want to do that because of two reasons comparison and copying so I don't want to ever like 
be overly comparative of my channel with someone else's and I also don't want to ever you know you don't want to just be copying what someone else is doing not that I would ever copy word for word and just completely rip someone off so anyway I turned on YouTube and one of the suggestions for me on my channel was like a video that again it was really similar to a video that I had put out recently or a couple of months earlier and it was like a time-saving mum hacks uh, and last year I put out um, a video like 10 time-saving hacks for busy people or something like that and again I watched this video and I was like oh wow <laughs> one of those tips is the exact term that I use which is not just like a generic kind of term it's a really specific term and tip that I have not heard anywhere else and I was like oh here we go here we go again and exactly the same thing happened it was like another tip it was like literally a word for word a very specific term so the first one was uh, a term called stack to unpack uh, and that's a thing that I do with my dishwasher and I, something that I mentioned and it was like the term I used the term stack to unpack and it was to stack the dishwasher with a view to unpacking it and I mean I know that people probably have this idea to use the term stack to unpack and in a time-saving tips and hacks video that's one coincidence the next one she um, mentioned was a tip that she said that she did was to use uh, what she called a VIP album on her phone and again exactly word for word one of the tips with the very first tip that I shared on my time-saving hack was to have a VIP or a very important photos album on your phone where you just snap pictures of things that are really important that you need to remember anything from like prescriptions to your kids shoe size anyway I think that is a really specific tip that I don't think you could just randomly and coincidentally come up with on your own and for those two tips to be used in the same video it was like yeah love I can tell you've just watched a video that you've found on YouTube taken down the top ideas that you like and then put it into your own video and claimed it as your own there was no mention of like oh hey i came across this tip on this cool youtube channel go check it out that is what i've done before on my channel i can think of maybe 10 times off the top of my head that i have just you know credited another youtube channel for recipes for amazon suggestions for tips around the home I consistently do it because that is just common courtesy and YouTube etiquette and I think it's something that many people are lacking these days obviously but anyway I'm gonna see what you think um, I'm gonna insert my clip and then I'm gonna insert what I think is the copycat clip and let me know what you think My first hack that I have for you is a really simple one and it's simply getting your phone and starting an album called VIP and that is for very important photos and the thing that I like to use this for is taking photos of everything that is important that I need to remember in my life that I am more than likely to forget. Another really cool time-saving hack is to create a VIP photo album on your phone and you can put anything important into that. So now I pay attention to how I pack the dishwasher and I like to say that I stack to unpack. So I stack it in a way that it is gonna be super easy and quick for me to be able to unpack it. The next time-saving hack feels like it's taking you longer to begin with but then it actually saves you so much time and it is the stack to unpack pack dishwasher method and that way when you're actually unloading your dishwasher it makes it so quick and easy to do and that is always remember that done is better than perfect this one is a little hard for me especially because I am a diagnosed behavioral perfectionist my next tip is something that I repeat to myself often and that is that done is better than perfect I think there's lots of perfectionists out there to do things that your future self will thank you for and your future self will thank you Know what you think because uh, I did hear back from YouTube and they said that that doesn't fit in their copyright claims um, but to pursue that through a private attorney so I'm like oh do I really want to go down that track of like getting a solicitor engaged and then having that expense obviously if you took it to court and you won you could claim for damages you could claim for the income that the other person has made using your work and your material uh, and then you can claim for costs as well but is that an avenue that you want to go down why can't people just be original and creative and authentic and have integrity? You know, just the basic traits of being a basically decent person. That is definitely one behavior on YouTube that I definitely want to call out because it probably happens a lot more often, you know, across other channels. So yeah, 
not happy, not happy and not going to just let it slide. I'm definitely going to bring that to the attention of the YouTube community. All right, so moving on to the next thing that is uh, one thing that I hate about YouTube, and I know hate is a strong word, but definitely hate the copycat I have you for sure. Um, the next thing that I hate or that's really difficult that I don't like about YouTube is that something is always changing with YouTube, and it is something, there's always something changing, whether that be like with the algorithm, or is that with the impressions, or is that with how you can monetize on your channel. Um, recently, there has been a huge thing for overseas creators, so creators outside the US, they have imposed this tax law on creators that are outside the US where all the views that are by US viewers and obviously YouTube is huge in the US so that's where many people's views come from that they are taxing the income that you earn from US views prior to being paid as a creator. So that's a huge consideration because creators obviously have to pay their own tax in their own countries. So to be hit with that double whammy, it's just, ugh, that was a tough pill to swallow. So we'll see that's coming out from this month. So we'll just see how much that impacts on earnings and things. And you have to remember that for some people, making and creating YouTube videos is their full-time job. You know, I'm a single parent. I've got two kids that I support financially. This is my job. This is where the majority of my income comes from. So when they just make this change sort of overnight, it does have the possibility uh, to impact quite significantly on the earnings of people. So that is definitely something to consider. And definitely if you are a YouTube creator, 100% would advise on diversifying your income so that you're not only relying wholly and solely on the AdSense revenue. So that can be through a multiple multiple streams. So it could be from you know, doing partnerships with brands if you have the opportunity to do that, uh, memberships or merchandise. There are a few different things that you can do to diversify your income so you're not wholly and solely relying on one stream so that if anything changes with YouTube and they can change overnight, it's something that you don't have any control over. You're always guaranteed that you have got some sort of alternate income stream available. Next thing that I wanted to mention about things that are not so great about YouTube is obviously, and following on from the last tip, is that you don't have or you have very limited control. So kind of once you've put your video up and out there into the YouTube verse, you kind of don't have any control. It's sort of up to the YouTube algorithm to decide, you know, how many impressions that video gets. So that is how many times it's suggested to people to view your video. And that is uh, like the, the algorithm obviously is an always changing thing. So you kind of have no control. So that's one thing that I probably like the least about uh, YouTube is that once you've put your video up there, I mean, besides the promotion that you can do through your own subscribers by putting posts in the community tab, if you've got Instagram, you can always push it on Instagram that you've got a new video up, but you're kind of limited with, you know, what happens to your video once you've put it up there. So another thing that I don't really enjoy about YouTube and particularly in like within niche communities, like for example, cleaning videos. And I have made a lot of cleaning videos on my channel and I get tons of videos suggested for cleaning. YouTube is just literally flooded with cleaning channels. And it is just, it's like each video is just a 100% carbon copy of the other. It is the same filming format. It is always like high speed, even down to the thumbnails, which are almost carbon copies of each other. It's all the same music that's being used in these videos. So it's kind of um, oversaturated and honestly, it's getting a little bit boring. That's definitely one thing that I won't be doing anymore is just doing that stock standard kind of cleaning content that just seems to be, you know, dime a dozen lately on YouTube. So I prefer to watch, if I'm going to be watching anything in that kind of genre, it's like actually a lot of Korean channels. So all the Korean channels that do like housekeeping and all that kind of stuff. So they do cleaning, they do housekeeping and all that kind of stuff. Same deal, like trying to motivate you. But it's just a whole different look and feel. It's a different level of next level video production, editing. The content quality is so much better, I think. Rather than just pure, just 100% carbon copies of one video to the next, to the next, to the next. I'm sure you can appreciate what I mean. It's not just in the cleaning genre. You know, for like minimalism videos, there's a certain like look and feel that the videos are shot in, a certain way that they're edited. They might have like lo-fi soundtracks. You know what I mean? It's like when you, when one kind of video content gets popular, it is like literally everyone just carbon copies that 
formula and then it just gets really repetitive it gets saturated and it kind of gets boring so definitely that is one thing that I don't enjoy about YouTube it is just the constant carbon copies of content but next thing that is one of my pet peeves or one of the things that I like least about YouTube is the number of people that complain about how many ads there are on YouTube now as a creator that is the way that people are paid when they have YouTube as their job. So you put your video out, you can tell YouTube if you want it monetized or not, that means that they can play ads on it. Uh, and then again, you've got no control. You've got some control whether you can put them at the start of the video, the end of the video, mid-roll, so that is throughout the video. If your video is over, I think, eight minutes now, that's another thing that keeps changing. It used to be like 10 minutes and now it's down to eight minutes. Your video has to be at least eight minutes long to be able to monetize and put ads throughout the video. A lot of people complain about the number of ads, but one thing that you don't, you may not know is that the amount that YouTube pay creators per view is minuscule so you need to be making pretty decent views or being paid a good amount per view for advertising on your videos and i think the average the average varies from country to country i've noticed that a lot because you have people who post you know oh what youtube pays me for a million view video or what youtube pays me for a hundred thousand view video and from watching that I can tell that the CPM which is the cost per mil which is how much YouTube pays you per thousand views it's very different from country to country and I think Australia is on the higher side I'm not sure why I think it's maybe because Australia's got a higher cost of living than other countries so um, to encourage creators from Australia maybe they pay a higher CPM to Australian creators I'm not sure but still you know it's a really really low amount like around I don't know what the average would be on my channel at the moment um, but it's maybe like a cent per view or something around that so when I first started uh, and my channel was smaller I think when also when your channel grows uh, YouTube will pay a higher CPM for higher for bigger channels with higher subscribers and a whole other host of factors I've noticed definitely that as my channel has grown my CPM has also increased so the pay per view has increased it could be a complete coincidence you don't know because YouTube are very transparent in some areas but very closed book in others so how they calculate the CPM wouldn't even have a clue uh, so that is one thing people complaining about the ads what you've got to understand is can you imagine how huge the platform is for YouTube I think it was something like 800 hours per minute of video footage or something like that I think that is from memory what I saw last time I looked it up like 800 hours of video footage uploaded per minute to YouTube so if you think of the IT infrastructure that they need as a company to to be able to house all that footage, to be able to have the platform where tens of millions of viewers around the world can access. That must be a huge infrastructure requirement from an IT perspective and that costs money. So, you know, they're in business to stay in business as well. So they're not in business to be a charity or a not-for-profit. They're in business to make money and stay in business. I respect that. It's not like a, a free service and I think that, you know, the quality of YouTube is unreal. I think it's a fantastic platform that gives creators around the world amazing opportunities to be creative, to put their um, creative self out there. It gives people the opportunity to, to earn money from home that may not have had that opportunity previously, like, you know, single moms or people who are starting out with nothing other than you know a mobile phone to upload videos to YouTube can earn a decent living so I think it's an incredible platform and I think it's an incredible opportunity uh, for people and for creators and I don't think that people often think about that they just have a whinge and oh why am I watching this why isn't this provided for free uh, if you're being provided this service for free it would probably be in the lowest quality video there would probably be buffering and all kinds of issues and it would not be a great user experience so to guarantee that really good user experience YouTube has to put ads in because like anything on earth having that platform and running that organization it costs money so I will never complain about ads being shown on YouTube and I will never complain about watching ads when I watch other creators content that's another thing I um I don't know I think that sometimes your earning can be impacted so hugely and it's like wow from one month to the other if you have sort of similar 
views and if you have similar CPMs but you have vastly different income amounts is that just because everyone is just skipping the ads that month so I would highly encourage you to next time you're tempted to skip the ads especially on your favorite creators uh, just remember all the work that goes into creating those videos from that creator and it's not just you know oh you point and shoot and you upload and then you get money it's not that at all. It takes hours and hours and hours to film videos. It takes hours to edit videos. You've got to create thumbnails. You've got to come up with titles. You've got to write descriptions. It's a whole process that's involved. It's not just, you know, taking a random, you know, video and just chucking it up on the internet. There is a whole work process and a whole workflow uh, and it's not easy. And for anyone to say, oh, that's so easy. I challenge you to try it. Try it for a month and see how easy it is after you've done it for a month. Anyway, let's get on to the next thing that I don't like about YouTube. Otherwise, we're going to be here all day. Next thing that I just does my head in in YouTube are uh, just like some people in the comments section. Now, by and large, my comments are just awesome. I love them. They're so positive. They're so encouraging. But holy moly, you always get that random ratchet group of a few who have just got nutsy cuckoo ideas in their head and they just come at you for the stupidest things like telling me because I used a I, I think I used a disposable wipe to clean my kids bathroom in one of my cleaning videos and I had this lady saying congratulations you've just ruined the planet I'm unsubscribing and I'll never watch you again and I'm like oh my gosh for all the positive things that I do on my channel to encourage like soft plastic recycling I show sure, every single time I do a grocery haul and meal prep all of the recycling that I put into the recycling bin and trying to like decrease the amount of stuff that I buy like so much good stuff that I put on my channel and people will pick up on one thing you use a disposable wipe oh my gosh it's like literally a disposable wipe it's like a paper towel and don't get me started people will whinge about you using a paper towel or a paper napkin so there's always going to be someone randomly having a go at you in the comments so I guess you got to kind of have like thick skin and just water off a duck's back or whatever oh this one lady who said to me in one of my videos I just had like a normal shirt kind of thing on and um oh she ranted on about I suggested using plastic mason jar lids instead of the metal ones that they come with because the metal ones always rust and she ran on and on and on and on she wrote about a paragraph on how this you're giving out false information they don't work and furthermore this and that and this and that and everything else and she said and next time you upload a video why don't you bother to get dressed and I was like oh just just delete and now normally I just do just delete don't even think about it and usually if they're ranty if they're extra ranty I'll just block them from the channel because I'm not interested the way that I see comments is like if you wouldn't say that to someone's face if they invited you to their home which is pretty much what people are doing when they're putting you know YouTube videos out there or at least the content that I create it's kind of like I'm inviting you into my home so if I do like a house tour or I do a declutter or an organize with me clean with me or something like that it's like I'm inviting you into my home to come over if you leave comments on my channel or on my videos saying oh your home is full of junk or you've got way too much stuff or everything in your home is just cheap it looks nasty of course I'm gonna delete your comment and of course I'm gonna block you I get a lot of comments saying oh you've got way too much stuff your space is way too small I'm like I'm a single parent with two kids I've got to live in this area that is very close to the CBD it's like the next suburb from the CBD yeah I'm gonna have a small uh, I'm gonna have a small house to live in because you know real estate's freaking expensive in Australia it's, it's not like all these uh, you know huge massive mansions that every American YouTube channel seems to have it's it's expensive living in Australia and the apartments or houses that are affordable to me are small so when I hear someone like whinging on how small my place is uh, or how I've got too much clutter or I've got too much stuff my furniture and decor is junky and cheap that that kind of behavior is going to get blocked from my channel I'm going to say something back to them for a start and then it's going to get blocked and they won't be able to comment on my channel I think that YouTube should have something in place that where if particular users get too many strikes on comments that they've posted that they should potentially lose the ability to comment so I think that that could be a uh, a way that YouTube could put in some protection for creators to stop people who are just 
you know, just trolling and out there for the sake of it, just making nasty comments on people's videos. Another thing that I don't like about YouTube is it is, uh, it's a 24 seven job. It is, you're always on 24 seven. And even if you only post, if you only post once a week, yeah, it's easier. You post two or three times a week. You're always on because it's worldwide. So you've always got someone somewhere watching your videos, commenting on your videos, it's something that you've always got to pay attention to, so you can't just, unless you disable the comments on your YouTube videos, which some people do, I think you've always got to be like on and available and you've got to kind of constantly be checking on comments, making sure there's nothing nasty or there's nothing, there's nothing bad or nasty going on in the comment sections. So I don't know, for me, I always, I'm always in some way checking on something. So I'm checking on comments or responding to comments or checking how videos are going. If I'm not filming, editing, creating all of the, the back end stuff that goes with it, like the thumbnail, the description, all that kind of stuff. If you're not directly creating YouTube videos, there's always something going on in the background that needs your attention. So it's kind of a 24 seven job and it's pretty difficult to just you know, switch off because you do have to keep the engagement up. You know, you don't just put content out there and then have people watch it and take the time to comment on your videos and then not even respond. So I really try to answer as many comments, to respond to as many comments as possible, which is, it's time consuming, but it's something that I do enjoy doing. And I, I think it's something that you need to do if, if people are gonna invest that time in watching your videos and leaving you a comment, which helps with your engagement. It's only nice, it's, you know, I think it's only the right thing to do to respond to as many as possible. Um, certainly if there's any questions, so there are uh, YouTube extensions that you can put on that have like got programs where you can, you know, filter out all the comments to anything that's got a question in it, for example. So I always do that and try to answer as many questions as I possibly can, which again, it can be time consuming, but they're just part and parcel of that job. So you just have to do it. The next thing that I don't particularly love about YouTube is the fact that it is, it's pretty isolating and it's pretty monotonous. So I've just passed yesterday my one year anniversary of full-time YouTube. So I've had my channel since 20, 2014, I think I started my channel and then 2015, I really started with um, like a, a kind of a series on my channel. And then from 2015 to 2020, it was kind of just off and on. So sometimes I would do it, sometimes I wouldn't. You know, I have got two kids, I had jobs throughout that time. So it would kind of be like, a, you know, something I'd come back to every now and then. But from 20, in 2019, I started doing it more consistently while I was working and then it really picked up and grew and grew. And then in 2020, a year ago now, I went full time. Um, right in the middle of COVID, which wasn't great because that's when advertising rates slumped incredibly. Uh, so probably not the best timing, but anyway, we got through it, we managed, uh, and still here a year on. Um, but it is really isolating because you work from home, you work by yourself, you, know, you don't have your office full of teammates that you can work with. Uh, so it can be a little bit isolating and also the work is quite, it's quite monotonous. And even if you're creating different types of content, like I try to really switch it up. I'm not in the business of this niching down channel like that's just about one topic. Like I could not imagine in my brain just doing cleaning content, for example. It would drive me nuts and I would think, is this literally all <laughs> I've got to offer the world is just like, just watching me clean my house. So I try to mix it up with different things. So there's cleaning, there's organizing, there's productivity, motivation, there's cooking, grocery hauls, um, life advice, there's just vlogs. I like to do a little bit of everything. And even though like niching down and, you know, focusing on one topic, can make your channel get bigger in the meantime. The one thing that I want with my YouTube channel is for all content to have consistent views no matter what I post. So if you look at channels that are just purely organizing or just purely minimalism or just cleaning channels or just cooking channels, they might have spiked views for some, for those content videos that are directly on that niche content. Uh, but if they put anything else out, like a vlog, or if they do any other kind of content, there is a huge difference from their niche content to anything else they try to put out. So they've, they've kind of pigeonholed themselves into just that one topic, uh, which is something I definitely didn't want to do because I'm like, you just get sick of it after a while and it would just seem like monotonous and it would be like, oh, you're just putting it out there, putting it out there, putting it out there. But I don't know if I could remain passionate about cleaning my house, for example, for a long-term business idea. So I try to spread my content to, 
you know, a wide variety. But again, it's within, you know, the things that I'm interested in because the channel has to obviously remain authentic um, or else people aren't going to be, you know, engaged. And I'm happy to say that as I've built the channel and built the channel, and I'd say it's like a, it's not a small channel, but it's not a huge channel. Um, I think it's like on the... <laughs> 40% I don't know what the average channel size is on YouTube I have to find that out not small not big but it's kind of pretty decent especially for like Australian channels um, which is good and the thing that I'm most happy and proud about is that I've managed to create like an audience of like more loyal kind of followers that watch all the content that I put out and you can see from YouTube analytics like how many people watch consistently across your channel as to how many just watch like one or two of your videos. Um, so that's a really interesting analytic to, to keep a track of. Um, yeah, but isolating, the, the, the fact that you're so isolated in just working alone all the time um, and, and that kind of feeling of monotony it's just like a bit of a it feels like a bit of a hamster wheel sometimes so a tip that I've got for that if you are also a creator that is feeling like that is maybe network with other creators uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in your own country it can be anywhere around the world there's a couple of Facebook sites that I know of that are for content creators and get out of the house and take advantage of free Wi-Fi and stuff around when you're either editing or working on your videos so you can do it you know in the library you can do it in the park don't just be stuck working from home at your desk 24 7 because it will probably drive you crazy pretty quickly um i think we're up to seven and i think that's pretty much all of the things that i can think of that are not so great about youtube obviously there are so many good things about youtube and i could make like a whole video about the great things about youtube but i think some that are really worth a mention is um as i mentioned before with the youtube it's such a platform that is open to creativity you can literally make youtube content on absolutely anything there is such a wide spectrum of things that you can make youtube like i think it's the second biggest search engine after google and obviously youtube is owned by google it's the second biggest search engine to to find like how to is i think the the most the highest search starter so most people start their searches with how to on youtube so it's a huge platform and it just offers so many people around the world such an amazing creative outlet to be able to make and put out there whatever they want like even on my channel i have done such a random assortment of things everything from like how to put your hair up in a bun using a bobby pin um that was my very first youtube channel that i uploaded and i actually uploaded it to show my kids how easy it was because my son wanted to be a youtuber back then and i was like this is how easy it is and i just recorded it and he's like oh i don't like he was saying like he didn't feel like confident enough and i was like pretend to be someone else and i was like pretend to be your favorite like movie star or something and so i was like putting on an american accent and i was like see how easy it is that video is private now because it's kind of cringy and embarrassing but that is the thing that i'm saying from that i've done makeup tutorials i've done product reviews i've done house cleaning i've done organizing i've done outfits i've done a, a ratchet halloween competition that i entered for a um instagram competition like such a huge spectrum of videos that you can put out so it's like literally whatever you want to create you can put it on youtube which I think is fabulous and it is all for free so uh, well actually if you are whinging about the YouTube ads you can also go YouTube premium and you just pay a subscription so you pay a subscription for Netflix or binge or Stan or whatever you watch Disney Plus if you pay a subscription fee for that why wouldn't you pay a subscription fee and watch YouTube ad free by using their YouTube premium I think that the IT requirements for YouTube must be so much huger than say Netflix for example where they get their content, they upload it, that's it. It's kind of a set and forget. You just have to put it up there and anyone can access it. With YouTube, you've got people uploading, you've got people downloading, you really don't have a lot of control over what people are putting up there. So it must be a huge workflow to be able to manage and maintain YouTube as a safe and um, accessible platform for everyone. So. Huge respect to the people behind the scenes at YouTube who do provide this. So there's that. I think the other great thing, as I mentioned before, is that it offers like anyone the opportunity to, you know, work for themselves, make money and really make a business out of this. So it can be a hobby that you do purely for fun um, or it can be something that you turn into a viable money making business. 
So definitely love that about it. The other thing that I really love, and this is the biggest and most important thing that I love about YouTube, and that is the subscriber community. I know I mentioned you get a few random odd bods in the comments that just go off their nut. Um, but by and large, the best thing about YouTube is the comments and the engagement after it. Like I have had comments that have made me cry <laughs> because they have been so like warm and fuzzy and people telling me how much like the things that they've learned from my channel have changed their life or just improved so many ways. Um, it's literally the best thing to come back and I love it when people comment on how I parent my kids. Obviously I've got my kids and I've shared them more over the last kind of year to year and a half than previously. And to have people like comment on them and saying they've been raised into really good young men and how much people love Freddie. He's asleep. Hey Freddie, you're going to have to come and get in this video. Hang on, I've got to get Freddie. Sleeping. And little Freddy, the star of the show, he's been sleeping all through my filming this video because we had a big walk, didn't we? We're going to go out for a little pee-pee walk again soon. You've still got your harness on, you just went straight to sleep. Mummy didn't even take your harness off. Oh, you poor neglected thing. Honestly, we got Freddy um, almost five months ago and the love that people have for Freddy on this channel, it is just so incredible. So I always try and show him in all the videos because he has just become like the little star of the Sunday Stylist channel. He's such a little cutie, we love him so much. But just people who are such genuinely really happy and supportive of you and what you do. It's just like, not like nothing else. So that is definitely one of the best things about YouTube for sure. So guys, that about wraps up this video. I don't even know if it was actually 10 things. I kind of had some points jotted out, but uh, yeah, that one main um, elephant in the room that I really wanted to address was that nasty copycatting, well, those two copycatting incidents that happened recently. Um, but you know what? It's not gonna stop me from making videos on YouTube. I will be pointing it out though and I tell you what if it ever happens again I'll be naming and shaming so in this one I'm gonna like <laughs> blur out and not name and shame but tell you what if it happens again I ain't gonna be backwards in coming forwards about it so I hope that if anything um, like that has ever happened to any other content creators out there on their channels I hope you really do kind of you know take the time to stand up for yourself and say something and call out that kind of behavior because it's dodgy it is just and it just shows a lack of personal character and the content of the character really shows if you're willing to just steal someone else's idea if you did that at university or at school it's plagiarism you're suspended or expelled and for it to happen on youtube with no consequence um i think that's a little bit dodgy but just for the sake of you know these people are mothers both of them both of them have got kids is that the example that you want to set for your kids like really and the other thing is i find that you know people who cheat small are not going to think twice about it to cheat big so you know it shows lack of authenticity it shows lack of integrity it just shows that you are you know lacking the basic human decent character qualities and i've got no time for people who are dishonest or who cheat not at all so anyway guys thank you so much for watching maybe putting up with me ranting and raving about things that you might not even know about youtube but that's basically it if you did enjoy this video like i mentioned before i will pop some in the description box that i think you'll enjoy have a great day and i will see you sometime in the next week for another video bye everyone